This is the Cubase version of our advanced side chaining and gating technique for voiceover and spoken voice tracks. I know that we promised to do a Cubase for Windows, but we had one hell of a time trying to get Windows to cooperate with any of our screen cap software. Uh, sound settings getting all messed. We had to reroute the whole studio and it still didn't work. So we're going to do this on Cubase for Mac. We also have a Pro Tools version, so make sure to check that out if you run Pro Tools, any of the Pro Tools. And uh, if you use anything else, Logic, Reaper, Samplitude, whatever else, this should work for you as well. But my fellow Cubasers, we are going to do the Cubase version. This is a technique to remove the spits and the breaths and all the other noise in between your voiceover that nobody wants to hear. If you had a, a quick 60 second 30 second spot, just do it by hand. It's going to save you a lot of time and it's even more accurate and uh, better that way. But if you have a six or seven hour voiceover, like an audiobook, or if you have a meditation CD or uh, anything else that you have recorded, this is the best way to do it. Let's get started. Same file as our Pro Tools uh, tutorial that we had earlier. First thing, I'm going to play it back for you. Now, listen to the whole lesson in your other ear. This time, you don't need to repeat what you hear. Is that all right? I don't know. I'll do one more swipe on that. Okay. First thing you need to do as you're recording, you need to mark your uh, mistakes and all your banter, uh, any direction or feedback or anything that you got that you don't want to keep. Like, Is that all right? I don't know. I'll do one more. That stuff, just get rid of it. There you go. A uh, quick tip, uh, an easy way to take uh, to get your scissors is just to press your option on the Mac. So that way you can keep your select uh, tool here and then just option and click and you'll get that uh, scissors up. That's the best way to do it. I'll show you once more. We'll extend this back. Option, click, done, delete. Okay, that's done. So now we have our actual track that we want to use. I'm going to keep some of the head and tail here. I'm not going to trim it tight like I normally would now because I want to show you what happens with this special gating technique that we're going to use. Now, listen to the whole lesson. Perfect. First step. We want to duplicate the original voiceover track exactly as it is. Same spot, same everything. And let's name this track Sidechain Feed. We are going to use this track to feed our gate. Which gate, you ask? The one we're going to put into our voiceover track voiceover right there our voiceover track has a compressor it's pretty much on there just so you could hear what I'm doing I'm going to remove it from our sidechain feed I'll bypass it it's the easiest way take that out of there and now we have now both tracks playing in time sample accurate we want to take this second track the one we called sidechain feed and send the signal to the gate on the first track. This sidechain feed track is going to be in charge of opening and closing the gate on the actual voiceover track. So what we need to do is we need to set up a gate on our original voiceover track. There it is. And let's put everything to ground zero. So that to zero, let's, that knob should be, I prefer to peak. I'm old school that way. Release should be at zero. Uh, let's leave attack at nothing as well. And that's set up there. The important thing in Cubase, what we need to do is we need to activate the side chain in this gate. In Pro Tools, it has a preset number of buses ready to go for each project that you start. So you don't have to worry about doing one thing before the other when you're doing Pro Tools. In Cubase, in order to set up an internal bus that we can use, we need to press that button first before we do anything else. Now that we have Cubase knowing we want to use a sidechain to open this gate, it's set up a bus for us internally. We need to feed this sidechain with something. That's why we have the second track. So let's bring our mixer up and go to our routing panel, routing panel, and you can notice that the sidechain internal bus has been activated. 
click on there, that selected, our panning disappears because it's a mono bus and we're good to go. We don't need to adjust the level or anything. That's it for this channel. Leave that guy alone. Let's move him out of the way. Let's hear what we got so far. Should be sort of decent. Now, listen to the whole lesson in your other ear. This time, you don't need to repeat what you hear. Okay, that's not bad. That's a good start, actually. I like that it's quite quick and accurate. I'm going to turn the threshold down a bit, and maybe the attack a bit up. Uh, why am I bringing up the attack a bit? Well, I'll tell you why. Quite often when you have lip smacks, they're short transients. They're really, really short peaks. And if you could find that perfect area with the attack, where the attack is slow enough to ignore the short clicks, but fast enough not to cut off your words, then you're awesome. So let's put it to 20. Might be too much, might be not enough, but for this specific purpose, we'll leave it at 20 for now. Let's turn our hold up a bit as well. That will allow the gate to stay open for a certain amount of time, not cutting off any quieter areas in the voice. So we don't get any gate closing in the middle of a word. Now, listen to the whole lesson in your other ear. This time, you don't need to repeat what you hear. Okay, not too bad at all. Save. Now, the next important part is we need to advance this track, the sidechain feed track, by ever so slightly. We need to have it equal that. That way, when this sidechain feed triggers this gate, within a few milliseconds, the audio would start coming through. This is my favorite technique, and this is part of the advanced technique, instead of just throwing a gate in the main track and then being done with it. You can do it this way. You can take it and actually move it yourself. But when you're working with a ridiculous amount of regions in an audiobook that's 12 hours long, I can guarantee you're going to forget to move one of them, and then you've got everything messed up. So the best way to solve this is by going to our sidechain feed track, Go to the track parameters, and you can see there's a little clock here. That's our track delay or advance. We can advance it by a certain milliseconds, a number of milliseconds. We could delay it by a certain number of milliseconds. I find that advancing it by about 100 milliseconds is perfect. So in essence, what's happening is the gate's opening 100 milliseconds earlier than the actual voice starts, and we won't lose any of our beginning of our words or any any words now listen to the whole lesson in your other ear this time you don't need to repeat what you hear okay i like where that's going we're losing some of the words ear and hear we're losing the ends it's not sounding fully natural yet so let's just fool around a bit more with our gate Settings, hold, let's put the release up a bit more. We might have to turn the threshold down a bit more just to pick up uh, some of the smaller sounds, but let's have another listen. Now, listen to the whole lesson in your other ear. This time, you don't need to repeat what you hear. Not too bad. Let's bring the threshold down just a bit. Uh, minus 27. Now, Listen to the whole lesson in your other ear. This time, you don't need to repeat what you hear. Oh, that's not bad. I still hear, I'm not sure if you could hear it on the video, but I still hear a bit of the opening, maybe too soon, hearing a bit of the breath and a bit of the noise before he starts speaking. So I'm going to go to my track delay, and let's put it down to 75. Now... Listen to the whole lesson in your other ear. This time, you don't need to repeat what you hear. And it's as easy as that. And it doesn't matter if your voiceover is five seconds long or a ridiculous amount of time long. All you need to do is select your region, bounce it out. You don't need to repeat what you hear. Okay, I like that one. There you go. We're all done. That's 
the advanced sidechain gating technique for voice. I wouldn't use this for music. Uh, I rarely take out the breaths in music. I like to keep them sounding natural, but for audiobooks, I definitely take out the breaths because they could sound more annoying after five, six hours of the same guy talking. Have an awesome day, and we'll see you again.